I was going on Family Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I'm just showing you some of the training books. I got a request for that. And I just finished showing you the Australian Ring Magazine. I did a little video on that just to show you some of the magazines that I have. I have, I don't know, a couple of thousand magazines total. But that was the Australian I showed you. Here is the trainings. Uh, you know, how to fight and how to box and so on and so forth. So this one right here is the self-defense or self, the art of boxing. All right. This one right here is covering basically turn of the century, you know, fights from the late 1800s. And what I'm going to do, I decided I'm going to do this another time. I'm just showing you what I have. Because I can't do this with one hand, and I don't want to spread the book open. I want to split the book. And this right here just shows you how to hold your hand. Now, remember, this is back in 1920s. So we're showing you the basics of how to uh, hold your hands and certain blocking techniques and so on and so forth. But I'm going to get into it deeper another time because I can't do this with one hand like this. All right, this one is how to fight. It's a complete self-instruction Book on professional fighting. All right, let's take a look at this one. Once again, I don't want to open it up too much. I had these books forever. And I'm just, you know, just kind of showing you a little bit. I'll do it another time when I can prop this camera up and use two hands. But basically, it just shows you certain styles, techniques. They give you some stories on what happened when that particular uh, style was used. And a fight. Pretty interesting. That one's how to fight. This one is scientific blows and guards. What blows to use, what blows to expect, and how to guard against them. This is book two of a two book series. And as you can see here, there's an older style uh, book. Once again, I don't want to split the book. I'm just going to show you a little bit just to give you a perspective on what the book is like. And this is more of a military uh, book, but it's showing you how to block and parry and so on and so forth. It has really good stories in here. One day I'll go through them. I'm just browsing through them a little bit right now. All right, this one here, Nat Flasher's a three-book series, How to Second and How to Manage a Boxer by Nat Flasher. The Ring, Trainers for Boxers by Nat Flasher. And The Ring, How to Box by Nat Flasher. As you can see here, Ray Robinson on the cover, along with Nat Flasher, editor of Ring Magazine. Nat Flasher, editor of Ring Magazine in the middle. And you have two military fighters here. And How to Second. So let's take a look at How to Second. Once again, I'm just browsing through because I don't want to open it up and tear the book up. I have these books forever. And it just gives you, you know, certain rules and boxing commissioner and, you know, just basic stuff. Shows you how to handle a man in the corner, how to corner. They're supposed to take their time and work with the, you know, within the 30 seconds. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, 90 seconds that they have to work with. How the fighter is supposed to behave in the corner. It shows you how to wrap the fighter's hands. Goes into specific details. Now here you have Jack Blackburn working with Joe Lewis. Again, I don't want to. Now here you have Manny Seaman and Joe Lewis. Now Manny Seaman was the second in that corner. Jack Blackburn was the, the chief second. He was the main guy. He, he was the, the head trainer, the master trainer. And when Jack Blackburn got sick and he passed away in 42, Manny Seaman took over. Now, Manny Seaman was like Freddie Roach, and Jack Blackburn was like Eddie Futch. I'm trying to balance this here. And when Eddie Futch passed away, Freddie Roach took over as head trainer. Same thing with Manny Seaman. When Jack Blackburn uh, passed away, Manny Seaman took over. Now, Jack Blackburn had all of them guys, like Sammy Mandel. Yeah, he had all of them, a lot of great fighters that he trained and brought up. Joe Lewis was the main guy, obviously. And Manny Seaman took a lot of credit because he was in 
you know, he was the assistant coach for Sammy Mandel and some of the great fighters in the past. So it just gives you an idea. Here you see Rocky Graziano towards your left, Waddy Bemstein to your right. This is Johnny Paycheck who's sitting down. Johnny Paycheck was an opponent for Joe Lewis. He was a bellhop boy. Here you have Jack Blackburn and Joe Lewis. They call them Chappy. Now the bottles used to be glass bottles, so they were wrapping them around with med uh, medical tape. So in case the bottle fell, it didn't shatter all over the place. That's why you see tapes around the bottles. They used to be glass bottles. Here you have uh, Jimmy Braddock sitting in the corner here. Like I said, I don't want to open up the book too much. In fact, let me move on. I had these books for a very long time, but I'm just trying to give you perspective. But I will in the future do it a different way where I can show you some of the pages. Uh, this one is the trainer for boxers. Let's take a look. Here, it pretty much shows you how to hit a speed bag. It just goes through all the basics for you. Let's see if we can turn this around. Okay, you can see here, this is a Jersey Joe Walcott mowing a lawn. Believe it or not, mowing a lawn was part of the training back then, as well as cutting down trees. This is Joe Lewis and Julian Black. Skipping rope. Medicine ball. This book is packed with uh, training regiments with old-time fighters demonstrating them. So, uh, that was Rocky Marciano. We just passed Joe Walcott. Some of the exercises. So you can see here's uh, Jack Dempsey, Max Baer, Floyd Patterson, Gene Tunney, Ingemar Johansson, Floyd Patterson. Who's this over here? Louis Angel Furpo. So I'm going to do this another time with y'all. Let me go with this one here. This is How to Box. And this one gives you more of an illustration. Here you have Benny Leonard. It's a lesson by Leonard, Benny Leonard. And all the great fighters are showing you little tricks of the trade in this book here. Uh, I got to do this another time. I really want to show you our fainting. And you'll see, if when I get a chance to show you this the right way, you'll see how the styles have changed. A lot of the old school. Now, you can see here, this is the parrying here. Half shoulder roll, half parrying. See, none of this, none of this stuff is uh, that they're doing today is no. None, none at all. Right off the shoulder roll, he's, he's going to catch and shoot. All right? Just trying to give you real quick idea what I'm going to show you one day. I'll, I'll do a segment on these. This right here is a very good fighter. His name is Tommy Gibbons. He was out of St. Paul. He had an older brother by the name of Mike Gibbons. Mike Gibbons became middleweight champion when Stanley Ketchum was shot by Walter Dipley in 1910. Now, he never defended the title. He didn't even fight for the title. He just had it as an interim title. His, young, his older brother, uh, Mike Gibbons. Mike Gibbons was one of the greatest fighters at that time. He was in there with Greb and everyone else. Right here, you're looking at some demonstrations. Who we have here. Oh, this looks like Jackie Kid Bird. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see if it is. That's Johnny Dundee. Yeah, that's Johnny Dundee. Johnny Dundee is the Scotch Wop. Beautiful jab by Johnny Dundee. Phenomenal jab. Here you have uh, Jim Co uh, Jeffries. Mikey Marciano. Ali. All right, so I'm just going to... Let me see what else we're going to see here. Right, this is some more training books. My dad used to look at these books all the time when he was showing me things on the bag and when I was shadow boxing and everything. These are just all just trying to continue here. Now, as far as record books, this is a trainer's book, but it also I get a lot of my stuff from these old books because by the time they get into these internet box wrecks and all that, they're confused. A lot of them are wrong box wreck. You know, I'm going on a limb by saying that, but when I compare them to the old books, they're not the same. They're different records. Uh, so I go, I get a lot of my records from, I have hundreds of books of these, you know, like this with records in it. And let me see, because Harry Grubb, I think Harry Grubb is number 10, page 10. Let me see page 10. 
show you something for a second with the heavy grip. If my memory serves me correctly, yes, I am. Okay, heavy grip, 1894 to 1926. That's when he lost his title in 26, and he died in 26. He lost it to he to uh, Tiger Flowers, but then he died that same year, and so did Tiger Flowers of the same exact injury. It was surgery uh, that actually caused him to die. Fight record. Okay, these are all the records of Harry Grab. This is where I get my information from. And this record book that I have is non existent, can't find it too much anymore. But I have so many of these record books, it's crazy. Just give you an idea. Let's see something. With Billy Misk and Battling Levinsky and Eddie McCarthy. I showed you a lot of these guys before. Bob Moha. All excellent fighters. Bill Brennan. Bill Brennan fought Jack Dempsey in 1920. Phenomenal fight that was. Battling Levinsky he was a light heavyweight champion. Chuck Wiggins. Very good fighter he was. Leo Florian Hawk. George K.O. Brown. Billy Miss, phenomenal fighter he was. One round Davis. All these fighters, I can tell you pretty much Mike Gibbons out of, uh, of Pittsburgh, but he was actually out of St. Paul. Like I said, he had a younger brother by the name of Tommy Gibbons. Tommy Gibbons for Jack Dempsey. He was in there with uh, Gene Tunney and Greb and all of them. Pal Reed, Kid Norfolk, phenomenal fighter, Kid Norfolk. He was a colored a light heavyweight champion, took the title away from Lee Anderson. Hey, yeah, Frank Moody, another good fighter. Ted Moore, Tiger Flowers. He was champion from 1926, and he lost his title to Mickey Walker. Jimmy Slattery, another good fighter. He was out of Buffalo, New York, as you can see here. Gene Tunney, very good fighter. Tommy Lachlan, one of my, he was from Philadelphia. One of my uh, favorite light heavyweight champions was Tommy Lachlan. Jim Delaney, oh, man, good names here. Jeff Smith. Boston. Jeff Smith was out of, uh, out of New Jersey. Very good fighter he was. Roland Todd, all good fighters there. That's the record of of Harry Grab. Here you see Bob Fitzsimmons. Here you got uh, Len Harvey. Len Harvey was a middleweight, and he was a very, very good fighter. European middleweight. Len Harvey. Very, very good fighter he was. I'm just going through this. All right, let's go to another book. All right, this book right here. I'm not going to find no place at all. Not going to happen. I don't know what happened. Something been eaten on it. I got to keep it in plastic. Very upset about that. The old Thomas Sporting Record. This is by uh, Tom Jim Foley. And he was a trainer back in the days. Jimmy DeForce was another very good manager. And... Jay Foley was around his time. Jimmy DeForce used to smoke on a cigar. But he had Jack Dempsey, <clears throat> excuse me, Harry Grab, and a lot of them guys. Let me see something here. <clears throat> As you can see here, John O'Sullivan, I got the records of all of these guys. The complete records. Uh, like I tell you, Sam Lankford, he had over 500 fights. I have records to show that. You're not going to find that on Box Rec or Wikipedia or none of those other sites. I don't, I don't know why. Here's another one here. How to box. How to parry. How to slip. 9, 10, 12 gauge. F stop. All these different moves. And here, like I said, I'll take my time and show you. Show you this last one here. And this one here is the blocking and hitting. And other methods. Defense. You have Muhammad Ali here. Scientific. Here's the shadow boxing. This gives you a perspective.